A very good afternoon to you, our cherished listeners. It's always indeed a very, very, very exciting to come your way every Wednesday with your favorite business development program on Radio Masterclass. Masterclass is powered by Joy Business and brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy, Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. Masterclass comes your way every Wednesday at 1.15 p.m. and runs all the way through to 2 p.m. here on your superstation Joy 99.7. It's the 29th day of July today, just two more days, and we enter into the eighth month of the year with just a few more months, yes, to election and also to Christmas. So it does, certainly does feel good to bring you today's edition of Masterclass. Lately on Masterclass, all of our conversations have centered around our entrepreneurs and our businessmen and how they are faring in this period of COVID, how they are managing their businesses, the things that they should look out for best practice if you like because all over the world we're looking at COVID and everything else so today you have topics like COVID and the law COVID and medicine COVID and everything else and we continue that conversation today we're just going to be looking at how COVID has affected everything else and as a business apart from everything else that we have said you should do here on the show how do you also manage your cash flows how do you also manage your cash flows obviously we have a very wonderful person here in the studio I'll be introducing him shortly he is the executive director and the lead consultant for the financial literacy for financial literacy Africa and they also have the mandate of ending extreme poverty in eight out of every ten Africans by 2030 his resume is like one of those resource persons I always say that when I grew up I want to be like them he's had over 14 years of industry experience spanning across financial services, technology, management consulting, social enterprise, and economic integration. And his work has affected millions of lives. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome my resource person to the show in the person of Richmond K. Frimpong. Richmond, you're welcome to the show. Thank you. Thank drum roll. Let me do the drum roll for you. <laughs> <laughs> you're welcome to the show, Richmond. I'm, I'm, I'm super excited because, like I always say, whenever we come here on the show, we help to build Ghana from our little corner. Right. And so the things we share here are not things that are abstract, are not mm. things that are entirely theoretical only, mm. but things that can be applied to the businessman who says, listen, I'm drowning, I'm struggling, my business is struggling. What is going on in the world? Mm. I've never seen as much information on the internet today as I've ever seen in this period of COVID. Mm. You know, you can type COVID and anything, right. and you'll have information. And the beautiful thing is that it draws down all the way to our country here in Ghana. Mm. You know, so, and we have by the minute and by the day updates. I mean, I was looking at the numbers today. I don't want to share too much gloom, but our statistics keep going up. Mm. Number of lives lost has gone up to 168 from 139. We're looking at total confirmed cases of 34,000. It keeps going up. Mm. But we're also learning to live our lives, come back gradually, if you like. Right. So you find that the presidency is strategically releasing certain information on people gathering and all of that because life has to go on. Right. We should be careful, by all means, do not throw caution to the wind, but life has to go on somewhat. Yeah. So, today we'll be focusing on the area of managing our cash flows. I'm, I'm particularly interested in that, because when I, when I saw this topic, my mind went to, you know, the scripture that says, if you don't manage what you have, or even the little you have, will be yeah. taken <laughs> Even the little you have will be taken away from you. But we also hear, oftentimes, you know, again from the good old book, saying that if you, if you do not open your hand, you, you will not receive. Right. So, you know, contrary to keeping and saving, mm. you know, the Bible tells us to cast it out and it will come back to us after many days. Mm. How do we reconcile that? As a business person, do I save the little money I have or do I diversify and get more? Do I change my business approach? Do I, I mean, all these are questions that we will ask you mm. about, but clearly you have got some wonderful um, um, information for us. Mm. So we'll, we'll, we'll take your information and then we'll come back and get interactive. Right. Talk I think, to us. I think your, your, let me say synopsis somewhat <laughs> is interesting. And that dilemma of what to do, whether to um, give some money out or to just put them under lock and key, which one works best? We would probably discover it as I go on. But just to maybe immediately in the interim, just give an answer. It's okay to give money out in business because liquidity is key. Just that whatever money leaves your hand or leaves your account of that business out there must be something that you are able to tell what money else it is bringing back. So every money you put out there, you should be able to follow the money and say that it doesn't matter the amount. As I give this money out into this particular expense, 
I am expecting to get it back. And when you are able to tell, then you are fine to go ahead and spend. But if you can't tell, then you are, you are going to be in trouble. So efficient cash flow management in difficult times is a topic that if you are listening now, kindly take a little bit more serious because it cuts across SME to very large enterprises. Now, when we say cash flow, basically it's about how money comes into your business and how money um, is expended in your business. And so when we are talking about, when we want to say efficient cash flow management, then you are looking at how you are able to spend in, in a way that brings you more than you spend. So that at any time T, your inflows are more than your outflows. So your inflows are the ones that bring you some revenue and your outflows are the ones that record your expenses. And so an efficient cash flow trajectory is seeing a, re a return that shows a picture of you spending A and receiving more than the A you spent. And that is the best thing to do. Especially now, especially now because many businesses are struggling. So I took a research on the Fortune 500 businesses, which are the, 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 the big ticket businesses in the U.S., and most of the time, they direct business policy and business growth. And I was trying to pick their mind on what they think about cash flow and how even things are going to be either the same or things are going to change or anything like that. And when I picked that survey from their report as, as recent as just last month, they asked them about six questions. And it are top, top CEOs. And in the six, three excite me a lot. So that it guides why you must take a critical look at your cash flow management efficiently. The first question they asked was that, is there any anticipation of when economic activity is going to return to the levels they were before the pandemic? Listen to the answers. 52.4% of these business leaders said, look, we are not going to go back to normal, especially to how business used to be before the pandemic until quarter one of 2022. 25%, that's a quarter, said really not even 2022, but until quarter one of 2023. That should give you a picture that if you do not manage your cash flow now, the situation is not just a whirlwind passing by. It's going to linger for some time. And if you have a follower of Ghana's budget, you notice that the finance minister, for example, in his release in the FT, mentioned that the, the economy was going to go back to normal in about three years. Now, after the budget was read, you can tell that it's probably going to take us five years because our GDP, which is the economic might of the entire country, is shrinking from 6.8 to 0.9. I mean, our predictions are that FLF Africa is even going to be negative. So then if you are listening, this should give you a, a, a peek into the future that things are not going to return to normal as they used to be. And so the little you have, manage it so well. The next question they asked, again, that is very interesting also, was when will business travel um, going to return to the same levels they were? And again, 51.1% said never. Never. Like they are not giving it a chance at all because the changes have been so significant. So if you are running a business, please take a cue from these directions because it's instructive to know that the way business used to get into your business it has changed drastically and now it's going to take you more money to even get the little you make. So this topic is quite a very important topic you should take note of. Then the very last one is, at my company, this crisis will, will have what effect on the pace of technological transformation? So here they were asking, is technology going to change anything that much? And this is the answer. 75% said that, look, it is going to be the game changer. And so if you are going to think about technology, 75% of the things you do must be considering your cash flow efficiency management. Then I go to the next point about the industries that this COVID is impacting the most. So that if your business falls within that category, you can be guided as I go on on what you do. The first is, I mean, everybody knows that tourism and hospitality. The second is transport, aviation and road. The third is oil and gas. The fourth is manufacturing companies. Fifth is retail consumer products. Sixth is financial services. Seven is construction. And then the last is agriculture. So 
if your business falls within this category, you should know. Again, if you look at the budget that was um, read, the mid media review, you notice that the economic growth drivers of our GDP were not the usual indices that they used to be. So industry was expected to be a driver, but industry was not. It fell. If you look at agriculture, it was supposed to be a driver, but it did not grow at the pace that the same year on year, the same time did. And the only thing that changed up was in the budget, you notice was service. So what should you be doing? Number one, you should be thinking about surviving first. Number two, you should think about remodeling your business so that business indicators that will drive cash flow will tell you what to do. How do you survive? I'll tell you how. The first thing you have to do to survive first and foremost is to make sure that you are maintaining the critical talent that you have in your business. There are some talents that are critical and one of them I'll just share is the front line. The front line here represents anybody whose activity brings in money immediately, almost immediately. The turnaround time of whatever they do brings you money. So maybe the sales person. Now, make sure that you do not just because you are saying cut down on expense doesn't mean you should cut down on your front line because your front line will determine your bottom line. So if it is possible to rather cut down on any back office talent that anybody else at the front line can double on their task, do it. If you can even automate anything like that, automate and keep your critical talent. The next thing you have to also do in order to keep your business afloat is to check your suppliers, your customers and financiers. And I'll tell you what you do with them as I progress. When you keep the business afloat, the next critical thing you have to be thinking about is to remodel. And here I'm talking about developing plans to rebuild the business for the new normal. If you remember the Fortune 500 indices I gave, it is not going to be normal or back to before pandemic situation anytime soon. And so you better build a remodeling and you better decide to live against the tide. And so let business run for you in a new way. So what must you do after these critical two things? Deciding to survive and now beginning to remodel the way you did your business to keep your business flowing. The first thing I will say is that look at the value chain of whatever business you are running. Because we are saying that cash flow is about inflows and outflows. You do very well to bring in more and you do very well to cut the amount that goes out. So if you want to do that exercise very well, then do a microscopic view now of the entire business chain. Whatever you are doing, from the beginning of the production up to the last time the customer gets the work. Can you begin to take a look at these three things in that chain? One, production and processing. Two, payment channels and delivery. Three, profitability and bottom line. Is there any cost that is tied to any of these things? Look at the cost and look at the money that... When you spend on any of these three, the money that come to you, and if it's possible, begin to now cut down on the expenses to these items and maximize on the ones that will bring you some more. How do you do that? Number one, manage your inventory. I don't know whatever you are, you are selling or whatever you are producing or whatever you are running as a business. If there is a product or a service to give out to a customer, then there is an inventory to hold. So manage your inventory and here I am saying that minimize order quantities and batch sizes and increase order and production frequency. Don't just begin to just keep stocks in the name of keeping stocks. Any stock you decide to keep today, it is locking some amount of cash, liquidity. So before you keep that stock, you should have been sure and predictably been able to tell whether the stock is going out anytime soon. If you can't predict that, don't lock up your liquidity in the stock. It may not be helpful, so you manage your inventory. The next thing you do is to manage your receivables. What are your receivables? Your receivables, and here they are invoices you raise in a timely, in a timely manner so that people can pay you whatever they have ordered. So um, when I say manage your receivables, what I'm saying is that whenever there is a request to buy a service or a product from you, Make sure that you are able to raise invoices as soon as possible so that the payment times don't lack. 
because there is difficulty for customers to pay money now, if you delay in raising invoices for your receivables, you can deliver the good or service and the payment may not come the same time at the same pace you deliver the good. Now, when that happens, you might have spent to deliver the service or good, but you may not get the money back in real time. So it's not even about getting the money back. It's about getting the money back in time so that even the forces of inflation, the forces of um, the values that to the forex, for example, that to keep the monies you spent to get the service delivered to your customers can also come in right time. The next thing under managing receivables is, is monitor cash collections daily, daily by prioritizing customers with large data balances first. So again here, I'm looking at monies that are coming to you and I'm saying that monitor your cash collection every day before you leave the office. Try and check how much was I expecting to receive today? How many people have delayed on bringing that amount? Then you can tell every day to know how much is coming in. You don't wait till the end of the month. We are not in, in, in normal times. So if you wait till the end of the month, you'll be delaying execution. You'll be delaying your receivables. And when you delay your receivables, remember you've already spent. And when you've spent and your receivables are delayed, then you are going to be in trouble as far as your liquidity is concerned. The third thing I would say is engage your customers and be proactive in minimizing the risk of disputes and late collections. Engage them now. For some, you may even know their problem before you deliver. They can tell you that I don't have money to deliver now. And another can say, oh, I can deliver tomorrow. When you get these two feedback, you know who to deliver now so that you can receive the funds immediately because cash is now clean, liquidity is now clean, and it's important to know. Let me just give an example. Let's say a customer that wants to do an advert with Joy FM. For maybe the rest of the year you book and do everything and the adverts are in you engage them and they say look we can pay you at the end of maybe september another customer the same amount the same advert size the same value of money coming in says oh i'll be able to pay you in the middle of august you send your invoices and everything to the person now because you are going to use the same air time space and value to any of these two clients for the same timeline the feedback you get from these two based on the engagement you got should tell you that because liquidity is key even if the one who is paying me at the earlier is going to be small let me give that person more value let me raise money for that person and let me give that person that space and probably stretch a bit the one who will not be able to deliver so that is a way to also manage receivables the third thing you do is to manage payables payables what is payables here look at these two things map your business's critical supplies to determine priority of payment so Payables are like what you are supposed to pay and receivables are what others are supposed to pay you. So when I say manage receivables, I've explained that the, the receivables are largely about the money that are coming in. The payables are about money that are going out. Now remember what I told you on how to manage your receivables when it had to do with other people. You have to do same when it comes to add, you also paying others, payables. So you have to know who to pay now and who to engage and delay payment so that you can also have cash in your hand. The next thing that is also important is to consider alternate supply chain financing options. Here, if it's important to you to raise additional funding, consider working with your customers to offer dynamic discounting solutions for those that are able to pay you more quickly. If it is possible, those who can pay you more quickly, liquidity is key. So the more money you can raise now is better than the more money you can spend now. And so if you can get a number of them who can take up options in terms of discounting and they will pay you immediately, do that so that you'll be able to get alternative financing options. The next thing you do is to now begin to renegotiate your debts. If you already have outstanding loans you have to pay with the bank and things, the good thing is that in these COVID times, Banks have been guaranteed with some sort of funding by the central bank and even the government on their fiscal and monetary policy. And they are making it possible to renegotiate payment timelines. So it shouldn't be a month that you have to pay by the original timelines that used to exist before the COVID period. Because cash is key, negotiate your repayment and have some breathing space so that as government will say there is fiscal space for you. You have money to do other pressing things. The last but two I'll say is consider convert fixed to variable cost where possible. Convert fixed to variable cost. So whatever you are doing in all these points is increasing your inflows 
and reducing your outflows. Now, when I say convert fixed to variable cost, I'm saying that there are a number of things that you use in the business. For some, you buy them outright for, for the, for, forever and you put them there. So maybe you bought a, um, maybe, um, um, a printing machine or maybe a scanner. Instead of taking money to just go and buy the scanner that you really not use as frequently as you want and lock cash, if it's possible, get a scanner on lease so that you use it for the time you need it and you release cash that would have gone into that funding for other things that are more pressing so that you convert fixed to variable cost where possible. You run just one shop and before COVID, you had a branded little car, maybe a Kia something, and you were using it to do deliveries. Now, the demand for the service and the goods have slowed down. And you don't usually go out like you used to do. It is a fixed cost sitting in front of your property or your office, branded with your name. But you spend on it full well, but you don't really use it as frequently as it used to be. Why don't you release that fixed asset into variable asset? And then maybe adapt the use of a dispatch rider who can deliver as and when. And it is paid by the one you are delivering to. So that is how you convert fixed to variable cost where possible so that you reduce your expense and you increase your um, incomes. The last two will be consider loan financing and related options. Loan financing and related options. Here, I will point you to either your bank because they are now having 2 billion guarantees or even to the MBSSI because now the MBSSI is not going to do just for SMEs. They are going to do also for large enterprises. And so you saw that in the budget review, there's about 150 million addition. You can go for those ones because they are, they, they, the rates are just about 5%. There is a one-year moratorium. So then you have a breathing space to spend some money that you don't have to lock up in terms of repayment for debt. And then finally, consider the appropriateness of your current operating model. I've talked about that in your value chain. So you know what to do. After all these things are done, take a look at your revenue growth. Take a look at your operating margin and take a look at your capital efficiency. When I say revenue growth, this is what I mean. Look at the things that bring you volume and price. So before I was selling 10 cartons of the goods at maybe 10 cities per carton. Now I can't sell maybe 10 at the same um, um, 10 cartons at the same 10 cities per carton. But I can have somebody who wants to buy 15. As long as it is 15, look at volume and do something about the price. It may be insignificant. But when you do that, you are able to push a lot of volume out there and it brings you some income. So that con 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 converts revenue growth higher now and brings you some income. So you look at revenue growth from that side. And now when you do that, you increase your customers. When you do that, you are able to increase your referrals. When you do that, you are able to increase your marketing leads. And it changes the amount of money that comes to you. Now, on operating margin, take a look at the cost of goods sold. And here, renegotiate all your deals with your suppliers. Renegotiate them. Because everybody is struggling with the supply of goods that are locked down. So renegotiate them. Don't just take them. Mm. When you do that, you'll be able to also now cut down on your expenses. And the last one will be the capital efficiency. Whatever asset you have sitting on your books, is it giving you the needed return? If it's not giving you the needed return, we call something plant, property, and equipment. Do something about it. Mm -hmm. You can lease it out. You can give it out. You can do something about it rather than letting it sit so that you maximize your capital efficiency. When you are able to do this, I'm sure we'll be, we'll be having a conversation as I, I, I end. But when you're able to do these things, you will notice that the little that comes to you in these difficult times, you are able to manage and spend on the most important things that border on your business. And you also reduce and cut down largely on the expenses that border on your business. And that is basically what cash flow management is. And most importantly, in these times, you've got to do it so that you can have much liquidity. Brilliant thoughts there. I wish you were my math teacher when I was, when I was growing up. You simplified it so much. And I know that our listeners are itching to get interactive. By all means, they have a lot of questions. Just remind our listeners that Masterclass today is brought to us by Goyle. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Yedia. We'll be opening the phone lines shortly. We want to get interactive. That's one thing you said that has stuck with me. You know, there's so many things that we have in terms of our personal structure in our businesses mm. that we can rework to make some money. And I like the, the point you've made. You know, 
in terms of payments, for example, I mean, you've, you've spoken beautifully. Push your payments are standing. Mm -hmm. I mean, receivables are standing. When it comes to your payments, try and manage it a bit. Renegotiate your deals. Right. And that's a key area. People are not taking advantage of it. Everybody knows that business are not doing well. Yeah. So go back and renegotiate your deals and they will understand. Yeah. Okay. Uh, we're going to be opening the phone line shortly. Numbers to call 0302216541. But we get interactive right after this. <laughs> For master classes and sessions, and you can interact with us via Facebook at Joy Business or at Joy 99.7 FM. And if you tweet, the handle is at Joy 99.7 FM. Don't forget to hashtag Masterclass. You can also send us a text on 1422 across network or join the WhatsApp conversation on 0244-340437. And our facilitators will address your concerns. Attention everyone, class is in progress. Right, if you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass here on your Superstation, and we're discussing cash flows, cash flows in this period with Richmond Frimpong. The phone lines are now open, 302 Pick up that phone and give us a call. I mean, these are tidbits that can make your business work without having to go and borrow money. We're talking about how do you manage what you have so that you can get a bit more liquidity and work. And today, Richmond, you've made it so clear. Right. I mean, it's been so succinct for me. I've never looked at it this way. We always say that... Cash is king. Mm. But today we have a new phrase. We say cash is queen, right. but liquidity is king. Yes. Because you see, cash tomorrow has lost the value of time. Easily. And I, you know, I'm, I was going to talk about the time value of money. Mm. While we're waiting for our first phone call to come through, why is it important for businesses to understand the time value of money in this period? Very Just very briefly, very while we're waiting for the phone Very important lines. because the rate of interest on holding your money is zero. One. But inflation is already at 11.3 if you're in Ghana. That statement you just made. Say it in plain English for some of my I'm, listeners. I'm interpreting <laughs> it. If you are holding money in your bank account now, right now, mm -hmm. the rate of interest is zero. Why is it zero? Because in, the, in, the, in your pocket or in your safe, you are not getting anything paid on top of that. Mm. So when you hold your cash, the rate of interest is zero. Then another level step. Inflation is at 11.3 now. Mm -hmm. It means... Your cash at interest zero minus the value of 11.3. So you are worse off if you hold it. Mm. You mm. better put it into something that will give you some returns beyond inflation. That is why you have to take this cash skin key so that you can make more money. Super. Numbers to call 0302216541. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. We're spending time here on the, on the show. We're talking about how to manage your cash flows as a business. That's critical. I mean, without borrowing money, we're talking about how do you do this. We've talked about customer service. We've talked about human resources. We've talked about marketing and packaging and branding, technology and innovation. We're saying today that you are sitting on value already. Yes. Don't go looking for cash anywhere. Right. Pick up that phone. Give us a call. Let's have this conversation with um, our resource person today. Numbers to call 302 You can also send us a comment on 0244 Four zero four three seven. Richmond, I have a question for you. Okay. Return on investment. You spoke about return on investment. Mm. Every amount of money that you spend must bring back something. Yes. So comes my question. Is all return on investment cash? Not necessarily. All return on mm. investment is not cash, but it must be value that affects your profitability. Mm. So there can be return on investment that reduces your expense on an item. It doesn't bring you cash, but it reduces your expense it reduces your cost of operation or your cost of doing business so don't just spend whatever it is whether it is cash or value make sure every money you spend follow the money it is bringing you something that will change your bottom line because at the end of the day it's your bottom line that matters mm. that is why you registered it as a business and not as an ngo so the investment or the monies you pay out as you run your business may bring you return as value mm -hmm. or they may bring you return as cash whichever make sure it changes your bottom line so you decide once the money is going out make sure something is coming you should, back you should ever more so now you should ever more so now even more important and, and you started with a, a scripture and jesus mm. was asking the guy who had just one talent yes. or pound and he was saying that if for nothing at all you could have kept it in the bank mm -hmm. why so that you can beat inflation mm -hmm. and make something on it yeah. so as a business Every little CD, every little penny that goes out. Mm -hmm. Remember I said that, check your daily expenses and get to know how much is coming in. Mm -hmm. Every day, you should be able to tell that I spend this amount today. How much did I make today on the expenses mm -hmm. I made? When you notice that the equation is always negative on the expenses you are making, go back to your value chain and begin to plug out the things you spend on now don't bring in anything. And cut down on expenses on those ones. And increase the expenses on the ones that bring you more. Because... Even for getting a, a, a cheap loan 
or a loan that may not cost you much. It may give you a moratorium of a year, but you still pay. You still pay. So it's important to follow the money as far as your expense is concerned and be able to tell how much every money you spend is bringing to you. You spoke about return on investment. I want to stay there quite a bit, just so that our listeners try and understand this in context. Mm. Is all return on investment immediate or in the medium term? All return on investment can be immediate. Some return on investment can be years. For example, you buy a plant and uh, maybe the plant is supposed to give you some power to make some production in, in Tema. It may not give you return on investment in the year you bought a plant, but you should be able to trace exactly in numbers how long it's going to take and how much it's going to take to bring in by the time you expect that return on that investment. You shouldn't just leave it in happenstance and assume that one day it will come. It will be lost out in expense. So return on investment may be a day, may be mid-term, may be long-term, mm -hmm. but you should be able to be deliberate and be able to define whatever return that investment is bringing before you make an expense. If you can't, don't make any expense at all. But every investment must bring a return on that investment, either now or in the future. Okay, this one is from on, on social media. This one is from Adwa. But then Tadra says, good afternoon and thank you for the lessons. Is it better to invest in T-bills now or to do mutual funds immediately? Well, that's a good question. And let, let me say... And she goes on to the cash available for up to a year. Great. So I was going to ask, three <laughs> things. If you are running any business and you want to take an investment decision, three things you must know. Mm -hmm. When do you need the money back? How much do you need at the end of the period? And then... What happens to you assuming the money is going to be re 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 exposed to risk? Is it going to affect you that much? So for Adjoa's case, she says she needs it in a year. Now when you need the money back in a year, you are limited to any time a year or less. And currently, mutual funds that are between a year and less are paying more than treasury bill. Mm. So you've got to look at that. Number two, your access to them is easier. Because for mutual funds, Anytime after 91 days, you can assess them. So then you have liquidity and you can also spread them. The last thing is that for mutual funds, you can top them up anytime you want. So instead of locking it up probably in treasury bill, treasury bill you can't top up. You have to buy almost every now and then. Mm -hmm. And there will be three different, a number of different investments. So our advice in this instance, particular instance, a mutual fund that is not equity inclined. Equity means that mutual fund matures in a long time. Mm -hmm. It invests in shares. You will lose it. Buy mutual funds that invest in short-term instruments, um, bankers' acceptances, see, um, um, treasury bills itself, fixed deposit and things like that in a mix so that you preserve the value one and you make more than what treasury will do for you. You spoke about liquidity. Let's talk about liquidity for businesses today because obviously that's what's happening now. People are not looking at that. They're looking at the cash. And yeah. you, you took your time to explain that you have cash today. Right. You're not pushing your receivables right. and all of that. And you're just paying out. How important... Is liquidity even over cash delayed for a business in Ghana today in these times? Liquidity currently, and, and not, not even just in Ghana, liquidity is the biggest indicator of how your business can survive in these turbulent times. Mm. Your liquidity ratio currently as a business, it doesn't matter what you do, your ability to take money to do whatever investment the business needs when it must be done without having to resort to any third party or debt is a critical most business success indicator now. So you have to make sure that your liquidity is under control because at any time you can't tell when you need money and when you want the money and whether you get it. That is why liquidity in these times is the greatest critical success indicator for you, the business owner. Brilliant. I've got this one on Facebook. This one is from Edward Kwesinia Mitchell. Edward says, please, going forward, would you recommend the building of huge office infrastructure for um, office purposes. Well, remember <laughs> I spoke about converting your fixed asset into variable assets, especially now. And if you look at the indices I gave from Fortune 500 and even now, the last question I mentioned in the six top questions was that a, a technology was going to take about 75% of the way we do business. So if you have it already, it's probably not going to be useful as it used to be. So begin to think about how you can convert that into a cash-making asset instead of just letting it sit idle. Okay, there's a comment on Facebook. It says, uh, this is from Edward again. It says, this class is useful at the personal and family levels as well. Thank you. Um, there's, a, there's another comment on you from Adwa. Adwa says, can, you, can we please have the consultant's details 
at the end of the program. I think you can go ahead and share it now. Right. So yeah. you can. Um, if, if 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 anyone wants to reach you, you can just yeah. go to YouTube and type Richmond Kwame from Paul. The details will come and then follow it up from there. Same on Facebook as well. Right. Okay. Super. Numbers to call again, 0302216541. If you've just tuned in, this is Masterclass. You can also send us your comment on 0244340437. We're having a discussion here with Richmond Frimpong, and we're looking at your, the fact that we're already sitting on some kind of cash, some kind of liquidity. You don't have to go and borrow from the bank. How can you manage your cash flows in this period of crisis and make your business profitable? Numbers to call 0302216541, or you can send us a comment on 0244 340437 So Richmond I have another another question for you um for companies who are looking for example I mean when, when you were talking you spoke about frontline staff right and back backline staff there are companies who are beginning to look at the conversation of cutting down on their overheads mm. if you like mm. and by overheads they're looking at staff costs mm. what is the most effective way that this can be done without acrimony <laughs> when I say agree money, you know what I mean. I do. <laughs> There's a lot of I you know um, apprehension. I People do. are going to lose their jobs. There's an NLC. It's going to get busy. But the the truth is that businesses are not making money. Right. While you answer that question, also add the bit about burn rate and liquidity. Right. I mean, we're talking about burn rate. The ability of a company to be able to keep paying salaries without things coming right. in. So let's start from the burn rate mm -hmm. bit and then end with 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 the first question I asked. You see, ultimately, yeah. ultimately, you are in business so that mm. the bottom lines in the business can sustain itself and keep everybody else. So if you remember, I talk about survivor before even remodeling. Mm. And one of the critical things on the survivor is to keep the business afloat by maintaining critical talent. So if you are not going to consider your burn rate and you just, for the sake of pleasing, or maybe emotional um, in a, in a inadequacies, you are going to still keep staff, you are going to be hot. So don't just also be in a hurry to say I'm sending people home. Take a critical look at the business value chain. You'll be amazed that the people you send out today, their salary is, is maybe you send 10 people, presumably. When you go back into your value chain, you notice that there's one senior manager whose salary can take care of these 10 people. But the senior manager does numbers at the back. These frontline people determine the bottom line, go out and increase sales. But you just cut down on those people rather. Mm -hmm. So take a keen look before you even go ahead to do the cutting and all that. But most importantly, if we need to drop some people so that we can stay afloat, drop them for the sake of the business. Right. Okay, there's a question here on Facebook. I'm trying to... Okay, I don't think it's uh, related to this. Let's talk about technology. You spoke about automation. Right. How can a business owner use automation to affect the cash flows in this period? Amazing. And this is the best time to do that. And I'm telling you that Fortune 500 big businesses are saying 75% of your business now must convert to um, technology. Now, there are many ways to take, take cash. It's even risky to be taking cash. Manual, manual um, collections. It's even risky now. And you can use Momo, you can use a lot of pay apps, among other things. That can make one collection very accurate. And you can tell who is paying, when he paid, why he paid, at the amount he paid. At the end of the day, see, again, it reduces default and it reduces lack of no correct balances. So, and it doesn't cost much. It's a percentage of whatever payment systems are there. It's easier. So this is the time to change collections and payment systems for your business. It doesn't matter what you do. Whatever you do, you can change collections and payments for your product or service with IT. And it's not any huge IT. I mean, you can start with mobile money collections. Every business now must have a mobile money. Every business now must have a WhatsApp line. Every business now must have a Facebook page. Every business now must have a social media handle. The list. You don't pay much for that. You see, before you even think about the big ticket items. And if you do that, you can now automate your answers to clients who contact you on Facebook. You can automate your responses to those who contact you on WhatsApp. You can automate your, 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 your response even to payments and delivery. So this is the best time to reduce your expense by using technology and increase your inflows by doing the same. Super. If you just tuned in, this is Masterclass right here on your Superstation. Girl has some brilliant information for us. Going cashless has never been this convenient and exciting. Girl's e-payment systems are now compatible with G-Link, the national payment platform. Now you can use your G-Link card on Girl POS machines to purchase fuel. 
GH Link Cards offered additional payment options for fuel purchases at Goyle stations in addition to the Go Card. Every fuel purchased is recorded automatically on your monthly bank statement, helping cardholders track and manage expenses. So go ahead and use your GH Link Card to buy fuel and all lubricants from any girls, any of girls over 400 stations across Ghana. Go cashless and protect yourself and stick to all the COVID-19 protocols in these times. Goyle, they say good energy. Goyle, Yenara, Igedia. Now, when you were speaking, you spoke about automation and how we can use those to help our businesses. Let's speak a bit about innovation. And I, somehow I've come to understand the distinction between automation and innovation because of one of our resource persons, Kofi Dadzi. Okay. Kofi, good afternoon to you if you're listening. Nice and, you and, and, and yeah, one of the things he said was that, yeah, innovation doesn't always have to be IT based. Right. How can people repurpose, repackage, realign, reorganize their businesses in these times in terms of their operational structure to manage their cash flows and essentially to manage profitability in the end? So that comes into the center of innovation, looking through your value chain for these three things. Do you do production and processing, whether it's a service or a product? Do you do payment channels and delivery, whether it's a service or a product? Do you, do, do you have concern for profitability and bottom line? Look at any of these three items I've mentioned and ask yourself, how well can I do it to reduce my cost and still get the same revenue flows I was getting? Mm -hmm. How better can I do it to cut down the expense in my production and processing, but still get the same or even more revenue as it's coming. How well can I get payment channels and deliver to customers who want them at a lesser cost and still get the same value? When you can ask these questions and begin to say, example, I used to use my small car to deliver goods. I used to use my small taxi to deliver. I used to use Uber to deliver. But now I can use a dispatch rider to deliver. It is it less? If it is, it's innovation. You switch quickly and you lease out your car and you make some savings, but you get the same payments that customers would have paid you for the service or the good. So it's instructive now to look at the 360 degree of your value chain from the beginning of production to the end of delivery. What one thing can I do to reduce my cost of operation but increase or keep the same amount of revenue that comes in? That is innovation. You are good to go. Brilliant. And you make it sound so simple. It means like for, for ages we've been doing this in a certain way. Now situations are forcing us to look at it again right. and diversify That's and it. become a bit more efficient. That's it. That's What's it. our take out from today's conversation? If we remember nothing from today, what are the, the, the punchlines that we should take away with us? Number one, every expense you make on the business or on the service or product, you should be able to definitely tell what it is bringing in before you expend. Number two, Always check every day, not at the end of the month, every day now, be able to tell your expense against your revenues, what is the picture like, so that you can tell even before the end of the month, if you've got to correct something or otherwise. The final thing is that, check your liquidity, it is your temperature for business success, check your liquidity, it is your blood pressure for business success, check your liquidity, it's your lifeline to still survive in these turbulent times. And if you manage your liquidity, it doesn't matter what happens. You'll still be good, flowing, and doing well in business. Wow. These are super, 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 super thoughts right here. We've got another message from Girl. Girl's new super synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 leaves are the best engine oils for any vehicle. They're specially engineered engine oils which efficiently work on all our modern petrol and diesel engines. They clean, they protect, they reduce fuel consumption, and they prolong oil change intervals, as well as enhance engine performance right from when we start up to when we switch off. So go to any girl filling station today and grab the new girl super synthetic 5W20 and 5W30 leaves for brilliant performance, superior vehicle performance. Goyal, they say good energy. Goyal, you're not right yeah, This has been Masterclass here on a super station. We've shared some thoughts and we're back on your radio same time next week to share additional thoughts on your work as a business person. My name is Yabana. Up next is the news at 2. We'll see you same time next week. <laughs>